Hello everyone, my name is Keenan and welcome to my YouTube channel. Are you sitting out there in the world, seeing all these construction projects go up around you, all these people in hard hats and vests, and thinking, hmm, I wonder what their expectations for their job was and what the actual reality of it is. Well, you're in luck because today we're going to be talking about construction engineering or construction management, expectations versus reality. Hopefully this will help anybody that's majoring in some sort of civil engineering or construction management or help you get a little bit more prepared when you start your job in the construction industry. And this is just my perspective, a guy that's been working for a multi-billion dollar contractor here in Hawaii in the building industry. And if you really love construction, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any more videos like this. So an expectation that I'm sure a lot of people have going into construction is that you will use a lot of what you learned in school in the field. At least from my perspective, getting my civil engineering degree, paying all that money and you know, you go through those thoughts like, hmm, you know, I paid all this money for all these books in school. I should probably keep them in the event that I'll use them in my job. Nope. Now, am I saying that my education in college was not worth it? It was a waste of my time and I don't use any of it? Not really. What I am saying for the basic things that I use for my job from an engineering perspective, it's basic trig and the really complicated function of adding and subtracting fractional inches. And if you don't live in the United States, you don't even need to do the last one. Because you're working as a general contractor, you're not really doing a lot of engineering design. That's done by like a structural design engineer. But having an engineering background can allow you to understand what the structural engineer is doing in their design. And maybe if something goes wrong in the field, you can propose a better solution that makes more sense. And I can't speak to them on a knowledge that comes out of like getting a construction management degree, but I do know that a lot of the means and methods that occur in construction are company based. In other words, the way that one company does things may not be the same as another company. So though you'll have some basic knowledge and things like that, you're really gonna have to go through the learning curve of the company's resources anyway. So I think in general, the amount of knowledge that you're really gonna have to retain from the time that you were in school is probably something like maybe 20%. And even if you don't retain 20%, if you're at zero, you can learn everything you need to know on the job. In my opinion, construction is like 30% technical, 70% effort. So of course, the more that you do retain from college, the better it'll help you out. All I'm saying is don't stress yourself out if you don't even remember what happened last semester. And another thing to keep in mind, there are construction project engineers in the industry that don't even have a construction management or engineering degree. So just keep that in mind. And expectation number two, the bigger the project, the better it'll be for your career. This may not necessarily be true. Size doesn't always matter. So there's two sides to this. Yes, the bigger projects in the company get a lot more exposure. So if the project does well, the team gets kind of glorified and there's a lot more district and corporate management that looks at the job. And when you're on a bigger job, you'll have a bigger team. So you have a bigger support group that allows you to kind of shore each other up if there's any shortcomings. When you're on a bigger team, you'll be a lot more focused in what you're in charge of. So when you first start out, your one responsibility on a really big job may just be to quality control rebar. You'll have a rebar engineer, you'll have a concrete engineer, you'll have a steel engineer, engineer. Depending on how big the budget is for the job, you may have one engineer per scope. So you'll become an expert in that one field when you're on a large job. However, and this is where I say this may not necessarily be the best thing for your career. These larger jobs will take multiple years and you'll spend a lot of time perfecting this one thing. But buildings are made of so many different things, not just rebar, not just concrete, not just cabinets. Everything needs to come together. And that's why if you're on too many large jobs, you don't get to see the whole breadth of the building come together. Because you're so hyper-focused in certain areas, you become an expert at only a few things. And all of that is tied up over multiple years. Whereas if you're on a smaller job with a smaller team, you're going to have to be in charge of more scopes. And when you handle more scopes and you see how all of them affect each other and how you need to sequence them, you become a better engineer and therefore project manager or construction manager. And I think that is really the key to construction, is understanding how all the different pieces come together. So yes, you might not get the huge publicity for being on a smaller job, but what the actual experience that you get and what you're gonna walk away from the job, to me, will be a lot more valuable than somebody that just spent a few years just focusing on one thing. And probably the worst scenario that you can be in is if you're on a long, big job doing one thing and then you get so good at it that you get pigeonholed. So then they send you on another big job where you're doing the exact same thing and that's what you don't want for your career. Whereas if you do a smaller job where you're exposed to a lot of different things, maybe you might even turn over a few jobs in the time that one person's working on one full job. So bigger is not always better, it's how you apply the experience. So expectation number three, construction's hard, and it is. 
It's hard. Honestly, construction is not for the faint of heart. And that may sound a little dramatic, but I'm just trying to be real with you here. If you think you're gonna walk into the world of big general contracting and you're gonna be able to work a 40 hour week, everything's gonna be fine, it's gonna be stress free, you're wrong. Construction has tight schedules, tight budgets, and there's a lot of hours that are required to execute the job. The industry is trying to move in a direction to trying to promote work-life balance, so it's a little better than what I heard it used to be back in the day, but it still requires a lot. And I'll always keep saying this, construction is an experience-based industry. If you want to succeed, you need to spend the time to get that experience. And a lot of times what that leads to is that people spend a lot of hours at work trying to get that experience, and that may lead to maybe strained relationships in your life. And maybe this is just a Hawaii thing, but I see a lot of old timers out there that are maybe on their like third or fourth marriage. It's just that all the hours that you spend at work is not conducive to like a family lifestyle. If you think you're gonna be home by three o'clock so that you can play with your kids and maybe coach your kids at soccer practice, things like that, probably won't happen if you're in construction. And you're dealing with a lot of different types of people. You're dealing with the workforce, you're dealing with your own internal team, you're dealing with the architect, you're dealing with designers, that's a lot of personalities that you're going to have to juggle and they all have different expectations of you, different wishes and if all of them for whatever reasons are really bad to you, it can kind of suck. So, so I don't want to scare anyone, I think the construction industry is a fantastic industry to be a part of. But if you're coming here for the money or you think that it's just going to be easy and a walk in the park, you're going to be met with some disappointment. So expectation number four, you're first starting out so you'll be at the bottom of the totem pole so you'll be able to have time to kind of feel things out and you won't really have a say in a lot of things. So I think in some circumstances, yes. But for me, the majority of my time, no. Even though I was just starting out, I was thrown into the fire multiple times. And for me, I kind of have the personality to deal with that. I try to embrace any challenge and try to turn it into some sort of positive for myself. But for the vast majority of people, I think it can be very unsettling to have the amount of responsibility that is sometimes put on you when you first start out. And a lot of times this happens when you have a high stress job or you have people that are kind of unqualified above you that are just leaning on you to help them out. So I'll give you an example. So when I first started out in my career, I had a really good superintendent that knew a lot about the job, he knew a lot about construction, has been around a long time. So he kind of took me under his wing and taught me some stuff along the way. So nothing that I told him, there was no new information that would surprise him. So it was good because I got to learn and there was no real risk to the job because somebody had already done the research prior. However, what I'm finding nowadays is that it is a diamond in the rough situation. It is more often there's going to be a lot of responsibility put on the new engineer's plate and the expectation and the hope is that you just go and run with it. So for example, there was a lobby area down below one of the buildings I was doing that needed to get done in a few months. And this included making like a little floating platform with a stairway and this big water feature, pouring some pavement, pouring a retaining wall and all kinds of sidewalks and things like that. So usually, or the way that I was brought up is that the engineer will help the superintendent execute the plan. The superintendent will figure out how many men he needs for the job to get it done. The superintendent will order the concrete, make sure the work is sequenced, schedule it, and the field engineer just assists the person along the way. My job was to do all of that. So I had to schedule with my sub trades, I had to order the concrete, I had to know all the rebar details, I needed to make all the drawings for the guys, things like that. And trust me, it was not easy. But I came out of that experience knowing so much more. And here's what I want you guys to take away from this experience. There's two different ways of learning. You can learn through mentorship when you have somebody that's very qualified and capable, but you can also learn by, for lack of a better word, suffering. Each way is a way of learning, may not necessarily be good or bad, so I would say that if you're in the construction industry, you have to take both as good. If you focus too much that you're suffering to learn, it's going to be tough for you to stay in the industry. And call me delusional, but I always saw those as more of opportunities for me to grow. I think that's the best way to jumpstart your career, to just jump in there, try to help, and don't really just cower in the corner and think that you can't do it because you're new. Get after it! So expectation number five, and this is a thought that has maybe crossed my mind a little bit, is that the higher you move up, the less ridiculousness that you'll have to deal with. So it's kind of like some people have that idea of, I don't really like this work now, but maybe later on it'll be a little bit better. I'll give you some examples. When you're first starting out as an engineer, you'll probably interface a lot with the field workers and people mostly at your level. And sometimes you deal with problems, like for example, one of our construction workers decided 
It would be a great idea since he had no toilet paper to use his shirt sleeve to flush it down the toilet. Switch when you're building a tower clogs a temporary toilet line and it makes things difficult for a lot of people. So we went around the job site trying to find the guy with only one shirt sleeve on. So then you think, oh, you know, when I move up, I won't have to deal with these kinds of things. You still will have to deal with ridiculousness. It's just on a different level. So this, you start to realize there's difficult people at every single level. And that's quite frankly, just part of life. My best advice to you is to focus on the work and make sure that all your decisions are for the betterment of the project. And you're going to have to learn to work with people. So there was a project I was working on that the job needed to turn over. I needed to work through the night in order to make the turnover date. So I thought out of the goodness of my heart, even though I was the exterior concrete guy, I would help out the inside guys. And then come to find out most of the inside guys went home. But that's besides the point. So I was there kind of out of my element just trying to help the situation. So because this was kind of a higher profile job, one of the bigger bosses was actually on site and he tasked me with working with one of the developers to try to make sure that all the doors and all the units were locked up. Because keep in mind, this developer also decided that day, that day, usually you make the decisions like months before, but that day they want to switch out all of the construction keys and turn over the keys to the owners of the units. So we were cleaning, trying to turn over the units and also swapping out all these keys at the same time. So I go to this guy, okay, okay, and again, keep in mind, out of my element, I have not really done anything on the inside of the building, the whole project. And I tell him, I say, okay, sir, okay, what's your game plan? I know your guys are following behind us. How do you want to communicate this? And, and how do you want to like sign off each floor? And this guy tells me, shouldn't you know? Isn't that your job? And I was just like, you little... But at that time, Bottom of the totem pole, you gotta keep your cool. And then later on, that exact same day, exact same day, an exact same developer, go down to the bottom, I'm, I see all the guys out there, all the workers scrambling to finish this amenity deck. So I said, okay, I'll pick up a broom, I'll start sweeping. So I'm there, I'm sweeping, sweeping, and this is three in the morning now. I've been working since 6 a.m. the day before. So I'm sweeping, sweeping, and actually, so my girlfriend at the time, called me because she was in the mainland. So they're a few hours ahead of us, so she was just waking up. So she calls me while I'm sweeping, so I'm there sweeping and on the phone at the same time, 3.30 in the morning. And there's one of the developer girls walks by, looks at me and says, well, that's productive. And I'm just like, what? What? So, so, quite frankly, I would have rather dealt with the guy that flushed his shirt sleeve down the toilet. Because at least that situation was kind of hilarious. But as you can see, those people were considered technically like the top. So again, construction in reality is a people business. There's just some things that just go on and you just have to deal with it. And quite honestly, if you're going into any sort of business, it's gonna be the same thing. You're gonna to need to learn to deal with people. Well, those are my expectations versus reality. Quite frankly, there's a lot that I really wanna do on this, so I may even make a part two to this video. Or if you have any questions for me or you want to react to any of your expectations that you have for the industry, be sure to comment them below and maybe I'll add them to one of my videos. I really appreciate the support. It's been so surreal to me to see people reaching out to me from all different parts of the world. And it just means so much that there's a lot of people out there that are passionate about construction. So as always, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any more videos from me and you can join our growing family here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and I'll see you on the next one. And Merry Christmas.